So now let's move on to table six. Uh, while we were napping, Fama and French went on and slayed many, many anomalies of the day, uh, showing how they all were different versions, that they all were explained by the three-factor model. But let's look at momentum and reversal, another similar anomaly of the day. So let me ask you to think intuitively, or, or what do you know about the facts? Do stocks show momentum or reversal, or are they a random walk? By that I mean, suppose we look at, we form a portfolio of all stocks that have gone up, up until day t. Will those stocks continue to go up a little bit? And will the ones that went down continue to go down a little bit? Will they perhaps reverse? Will the ones that went up come back down and the ones that come down go back up? Newspapers like to do that. A wave of profit taking and then the, they'll come back tomorrow. And I added a distribution to remind you that these are means. But there's tremendous variance, no matter what we decide about this question. Did the ones go, that go up come back down on average with a lot of risk, no matter what happens? Or are stocks a random walk, pretty much? Whether they went up or down, you form a portfolio, you're going to get the same average return. What do you think the answer is? Well, let's look at the table. This is a matter of fact, not a matter of, of theory. What do Fahm and French say the answer is? They went out and tried it. And that's a subtle question because it depends. It depends on the horizon. When we look at table six, they show us uh, stocks formed on different portfolio formation periods. So that's how long you look back to see past winning and losing. And what they found was that if this period was one year, then you see, in fact, some momentum. If this period was from year minus five until year minus one, leaving out the momentum period, how do they do from five years ago till one year ago? Then we see reversal. Where do we see that fact? It's the same style. We put them into 10 portfolios. We look at the average returns of those 10 portfolios. They could have run regressions, but, but this is how they like to do things. So when we look at 12 to 2, we see that the uh, ones that lost in the past, um, sorry, the, the ones that uh, won in the past, sorry, the ones that lost in the past go down, and the ones that won in the past go up. And this is huge. This is momentum, one year momentum. This is amazing. You can find a portfolio of stocks that doesn't earn more than T-bills in the next year. And then 1.31 is, is a bigger number than we've seen in anything else so far. However, if you look at the, the uh, long term, from five years ago to one year ago, 1.16 down to 0.42. Uh, so you see the long term reversal. These go in opposite directions. So we need to look for betas that go in opposite directions. Well, how does the Fama French model do at explaining this anomaly, uh, a, a sort based on a different characteristic? Well, let's look at the long run reversal. If you look at the long run reversal, again, we need a pattern of the Bs that goes with the pattern of the expected returns. And the expected returns went, uh, so let's look at the, uh, the market betas. Again, nothing. The Ss, again, a slight U shape. The big thing on the left, but the H betas are the big ones, 0 0.87, 0 0.83, 0 0.26. You see the pattern that where expected returns were high, the losers gained back. The losers also have big H coefficients. Another cheer, another victory for the Farmer French model. Let's look at momentum, however. There, there was a strong pattern from left to right. Do we see a pattern of betas from left to right? Market beta is nothing. S beta is the usual uh, slight U shape with a strong on the left. The H betas do vary. They vary tremendously from 0.04 to 0.54. Big variation in the H betas, where there was big variation in expected returns, except it's exactly in the wrong direction. The losers have big betas and terrible returns. The winners have big returns and no beta. This model is not only useless, it's counterproductive. The alphas are bigger than the expected returns. It's a total disaster. It goes the wrong way. It, it makes the puzzle worse rather than beta. Value and momentum are negatively correlated uh, in that way. So, Fama and French model fails on, on momentum. What do Fama and French say about that? Well, they say it's a model. <laughs> They're a little worried about whether momentum is real or not, uh, but not every model is, is, not every model, uh, is a perfect model. And that if you were worried about tautology, now you've seen the Fama French model isn't a tautology, it can fail disastrously, just as the CAPM failed disastrously. The CAPM failed on the value effect in exactly this way. Its betas went the wrong way. What's happened since Fama and French? 
I think at the time they thought momentum might go away. It hasn't gone away. You can, you can probably guess what would happen if we add a, it's called UMD, a winner minus loser portfolios, and use that as a big factor to explain the one to 10 momentum portfolios. It works beautifully just as HML explains the one to 10 value portfolios. For that reason, in, in routine workaday risk adjustments these days, uh, the four-factor model is used quite often. RMRF, HML, SMB, and a momentum portfolio, a big winner minus loser portfolio. That doesn't necessarily mean that we explain things. We don't really understand where momentum comes from. But if something is explained by that four-factor model, then at least you've reduced it to known puzzles rather than having it be a new puzzle.